Hello and welcome to KJ's Kitchen. Let's see if I can adjust my camera a bit. Make sure I'm here, hi. <laughs> so I am so excited you're here. If you don't know me, I am KJ. 14 years, a master fitness trainer, a fitness nutrition specialist, and most important to me, I'm a happy mom serving up healthy meals from my kitchen to yours every Wednesday here on Facebook on the getkjfit.com fan page. Also, get over to Instagram, check me out, at GetKJFit. So, today we are making a not only gluten-free, but grain-free pasta dish. Now, it doesn't quite have a name, but we're gonna go for it. Uh, what I would like you to do is make sure you are starting by heating up a pan, keep it dry for this first ingredient going in. What We're gonna go be talking about why the ingredients once we get going, so, um, Hot pan, I had my heating not too much longer before I turned on the camera. So I'm just gonna get it hot by hitting it to its highest heat. Now why would you possibly wanna be avoiding pasta? Now number one, it's a refined carbohydrate. It is not a complex carbohydrate. So if you know the difference and why you would be doing that. Complex carbs are already that way in life. It's not refined. So. If you are not completely grain-free, fine, that's gonna be your, your preference, but you're gonna eat the grain loose and real as it shows up, like eat brown rice. Um, pastas have been taken from their natural form and mostly made with wheat, that's the really common one, the salamilla wheat, I can say that wrong completely. Um, and, and what that is is very high gluten and it does start to cut through the gut, whether you think you're gluten Intolerant or not, it's not about being intolerant or not. It's about through time, gluten strips away and starts to tear away at your colon. Later in life, you get something called IBS. So if you're already starting to show symptoms of IBS, now's the greatest time to be cutting out pastas and refined grains like bread, rolls, pastas, all those things. And stick with the grain the way it came from the earth. Today, we're not even going grain. We're going grain free. Um, pan feels hot. What I'm starting with is a quarter cup of raw organic almonds. I pre-chopped them. You could go and get slivered almonds, that's cool. You could even buy roasted almonds. Typically they're salted, not a big deal. We don't have roasted almonds in the house, so I'm gonna quickly dry roast them on the pan. Quarter cup chopped almonds. And that doesn't take long on the pan, just so you know if you've never done it. Um, you just gonna leave it there a minute or two and you're gonna start to get, it's gonna start to get really fragrant and that's when you know that they're working. Now the reason I am taking this extra step to roast them is to get that flavor and that fragrant out. The flavor does change when you have a roasted nut. Anyone eat nuts out there? I would love to hear in the comment fields. Do you buy raw nuts from the store or do you buy them already roasted? Now I do not take this step and roast them to eat them. We just eat the raw almonds in a normal day. Um, but when needing a roasted nut or pine nut or whatever it is, I just take the raw ones we have and put them dry on a pan and that's how you're gonna get that awesome flavor. Um, here we go. So I'll explain to you this almond factor I add for the texture. I mean, so if you're not a fan of almonds, you could go with pine nuts, and that's a little bit softer of a nut. You could do chopped walnuts. Uh, you could even go as far as peanuts. I don't think that the flavor profile really lends to a peanut in this complete dish, but um, it's really a textural thing. Some people avoid nuts altogether. That's when you would reach for something like sunflower seeds. Typically, we do buy those roasted, um, and then Twitch are just going to throw them in when it's time rather than roasting them. Oh, I can smell them already. They're starting to get a little brown, a little darker colored on the skin. I'll show them to you once they get a little bit more roasting on there. Now, before you got here, I did chop my onion and chop my garlic because these onions I have, these sweet onions, make me cry. Yes, if you don't know the trick, hold a match unlit in your mouth and that will prevent you from crying over your onions but I just didn't want to cry on camera so I did pre-chop um, one sweet onion chopped pretty small I say not quite minced but finely chopped 
and then two cloves of garlic. Now this sneaky onion I find, I chop it, I'm like, oh, it didn't even make me cry. And then as I'm chopping garlic after, I don't know if it's the oils coming off of the chopping board or if it's actually the bowl sitting next to me, but then I just start like pouring. I've got two cloves of fresh garlic, finely chopped or minced if you like the little garlic press. I think that's a waste of time. I just like ch ch chop it up nice and quickly. All right, and these almonds, whew, I can smell them. I don't know if you can tell on camera how much darker they actually are. Um, I can see that here, the skins are nice and brown. So now I'm adding in the oil. So now that they're, they're roasted, they smell great. I'm adding in, I use avocado oil. You may use your preference. Uh, two, te two tablespoons. Got that in and we're gonna get the onions in the pan and start to get them, ooh, you can hear my hot pan. Start to get them nice and translucent. So while this is at work, Cooking down, I'm gonna show you our spice profile in this. All right, yep, those, I stirred it around, let them get nice and a thin layer, let the heat of the pan get those nice and crispy. So that's gonna be like a minute or two. So while we wait for that, I'm going to walk you through what spices you're gonna be adding into this awesome dish. I use a little cup. I like to get the spices all together as one before pouring it in, just to make sure that that flavor is one flavor moving through the, the onions and vegetables. Let's start with one teaspoon of pink Himalayan sea salt and one and a half. So I got one and a half of pink Himalayan sea salt. We choose that in my family. It has a lot more minerals than using standard iodine, iod <laughs> iodinized salt. You can say that a couple times fast. Okay, now we're gonna move to three and a half teaspoons of paprika. Siri, I'm not talking to you. <sighs> okay, somehow, um, I'm not even gonna say her name, but the iPhone's girl you talk to just thought I'd call her name. She's looking up paprika for me. Hope I didn't freeze too long. Okay, three and a half teaspoons. Uh, yes, three and a half teaspoons. That was my half. And now I'm gonna go for my teaspoon here and collect three. One, two. Now this is regular paprika. You might if you love smoked more, you might go smoked. I like paprika pure in this one. Three and a half teaspoons of paprika, one teaspoon of garlic powder. Oh, my onions are getting beautiful over there. One teaspoon of garlic powder. So keeping an eye on this, looking good. Now I'm gonna add my garlic. There we go, get that all in there. Use the butt of my spatula to spray every piece of garlic. Garlic is so nourishing and healing. So I don't want to skimp out and miss any of that flavorful awesomeness. So now the garlic goes in. That's going to take about a minute, maybe two. Here we're going to keep on going with our seasoned blend. Now I'm going to do a quarter teaspoon of fennel seed. Do you use fennel seed? Do you like it? I mean, I'm married to a Dane, and to me, fennel kind of tastes like black licorice. So this is an all-time favorite in our house. I add it to my sugo, my like homemade pasta sauce. I love it. It's been fantastic. Quarter teaspoon. Does not need to be rounded. Go ahead and do that. And now black pepper. We're gonna do one teaspoon of black pepper. If you don't love black pepper, you might switch this out for a white pepper. Red pepper is pretty hot. Make sure it's not rounded, guys, because pepper is spicy. So one teaspoon, and this would be an optional, is crushed red pepper. If you're gonna go for this, it's gonna add a lot of heat. So you might just do a couple pinches. Ah, we like the heat in this house. And I'm going with a quarter teaspoon. And again, not rounded. <laughs> Those are spicy. Last but not least, we're doing rosemary. Uh, you could, if, if you like rosemary, I go for a full teaspoon in this dish. Uh, you might find, maybe once you've made it, or maybe if you're not into rosemary as much as we are, you might back that down to three quarters of a teaspoon. There we go. 
stirring it up to make one big flavor profile. So if I had this as a mix for you, uh, this would be, and I have shared this before, this here would be the homemade sausage mix, okay? Because instead of putting sausage in this dish, dish, ditch instead of putting sausage in this dish which by the way would taste phenomenal but i think it overpowers the flavor of the dish and instead of having pork sausage in here we're going to go a little lighter and be a little more health conscious so i'm going to show you what we're up to now i suggest when you're going to be cooking meats meat chicken fish turkey anything you're cooking you want to add the spice to the onions so the onion is gonna get a little drenched in here, I'm just coating it, sprinkling it around. This here is going to bring forward the flavors of the spice much more than if you skip this step and say you have this full of meat and then you dump the spice. Well, it's not gonna distribute easily. You're gonna have a couple pieces of that meat mixture a lot spicier than the rest. So this is not only to help bring forward the flavors of the spices, make them more fragrant, but it's also going to make the flavor distribute easier. Cool, once we get our meat in there. So I want that to cook up a little, maybe like one more minute. We're almost done. This recipe is almost done. It's a very easy, fast recipe. Um, now we, I have chosen to use ground turkey. Now hence all these spices. I think ground turkey is very boring. <laughs> if you're just like, I'm making turkey burgers and you just put a patty out and salt and pepper it, it does not taste good. So you usually have to really pump up the flavor with ground turkey. Hence why I chose to uh, use this sausage seasoning mixture, okay? With some rosemary. Um, that's not in my typical sausage mixture. Um, we're going ground turkey. This one's 85% lean, 15% fat. I don't find a problem with animal fats in my life. We think, you know, everything in moderation and fat is not making us fat, guys. So if you run from fat, that might be part of the problem and part of your struggle. Don't run from fat, but be mindful. Don't eat fat as trans fats in baked goods and crap that you buy. You know, that's really the bigger culprit. This one I get frozen, pre-frozen, $1.89 a pound at Aldi's. It's the all natural, meaning not pumped with hormones. Um, what is it? No hormones and no preservatives and additives. So here we go. I like to just cut this puppy in half. It does get a little liquidy since it was frozen. So there's some water retention. So I chop her right in half, just like that. And drop it. Chop it, drop it, and plop it. There we go. Just that easy. I'm pressing the turkey down into my spice and onion mixture, pressing it, flattening it out, getting it as flat as possible. It does not take long to cook. So that's pretty much it. While that's cooking, I'm gonna to explain to you what I would have been doing in real time, but I chose not to do because microwaves are noisy. <laughs> so this is why it's a 25 minute meal. While this is all going on, which when it's done, it's done, um, you would be, if you weren't concerned about the noise, microwaving a spaghetti squash. Okay, so if you aren't familiar with spaghetti squash, let me introduce it to you. So it's an odd looking squash. It's not as pretty as an egg corn squash per se. It's called spaghetti squash for a reason. Inside, once you cooked it, it literally shreds like spaghetti. So this is our pasta, okay? This is the pasta right here, no grain, not even using like a gluten-free pasta, which is rice or quinoa or lentils. We're literally going no grain whatsoever because we cooked this puppy. Yes, you could cut it in half, gut it, seed it, put a little olive oil and salt on it, face up in your oven at 375 for 45 minutes. You could do that. And if you have the time and dinner's no rush, go for it. But this mom hack I love. When it's time to have spaghetti squash, you take your little butcher knife and, or little whatever kind of knife, chopping knife, and chuk, chuk, chuk. You, you put a few slices, rotate it, put a few slices. You can see here that little slice cut. You wanna have that so that it breathes. I like to line a microwavable, like a glass bowl um, with parchment paper because if you don't, if you don't do this step, guys, I don't know 
what about the inside of that squash after it's been in that micro so long? It is so hard to get off your bowl. It doesn't do it in the dishwasher. You have to like scrub it. So I found using the parchment paper saves you from scrubbing. Here's what you're gonna do. You poke the holes in it, you sit it in, five minutes, it dings. Find the stem nut, rotate it clockwise, a, like, you know, a third. You're not going half, a third. Put it in the microwave, five minutes, it dings. Find the nut again, the little stem, turn it a third. So you're rotating it, final five minutes. It's 15 minutes in the microwave. That's what this was doing before you got here because I didn't want this microwave causing extra noise. We've got enough noise going on. Um, so it's cooked and it is so piping hot. It's fine to do this in advance. By the time I cut this open, it is going to be steaming, which I think that's exactly what it's doing. It's self steaming in there. So that guy is happening while you're browning your meat. All right, one side's brown, I'm just flipping, flipping it over. Okay. You want to be using a large enough pan so you know. I've done this a few times in the wrong pan. And I find that I start to panic as the pan gets too big. And I then quickly move to a larger pan, doubling the work of cleaning two pans. So I do suggest when you are starting, get something nice and big. This is like actually my stir fry pan, but it's the one I, that has the most volume. It's definitely uh, the easier one. So here we go. So guys, I don't know where we're living these days. Can we even go a day without talking about coronavirus right now? This is amazing kind of meal that you can easily stock up for. Squash lasts forever on your counter or if you have a basement, it even lasts longer if it's slightly cooler. So, uh, you know, we're being mindful here in Asheville and I loaded up on a lot of carrots, potatoes, squash, things that really last a while, God forbid, you know, supply chain and we don't have as much in the markets, get as much as you can now, stock up. You can make easy meals with these things. Um, and they just last a really long time and they're nourishing, right? So I don't wanna like cause more scare for what's happening out there, but we're here in Asheville and there really hasn't been a ton of cases yet, couple heard of, but nothing really published of what's going on here local. But what I understand, because my husband really does like tune in, um, it's airborne guys. So just kind of go a little bit Hermitville, right? And stock up on some non-perishables and some, like I said, things like squash, potatoes, carrots, root vegetables, things that don't perish quickly, just in case. We heard it's every four days, things are doubling. So poor Italy is the entire country's on lockdown and a month ago, they would have never thought so. So um, precautions, precautions. Here, here you are, here's a nice easy meal for if you are stuck at home. Uh, so go ahead and load up on your squash. How did that all come to topic? I think you can't even you know, talk to anyone these days without that hitting as a topic. Um, not to instill fear, but to instill education is really what we need to be doing to tell each other. Take it easy. Don't go to a lot of public places these days because we found out it's airborne. People don't need to cough and sneeze on you. If you're breathing the same air, you can contract it. That's the crazy new news, right? Okay. So, almost done, almost fully browned. With turkey, unlike beef, you know, beef, it's okay. If it's just a little underdone, it kind of is easier to digest. I like to eat my beef medium, if not medium rare. You do, when cooking turkey, want to make sure it is fully cooked. Okay, last step here, because this really is gonna be done in one more minute. We're at 20 minutes on live right now. And this this meal is gonna be done in another two minutes. 25 minute dinner, 25 minute dinner. You're welcome. Okay, what we're gonna do, and I'm not using the turkey knife and turkey cutting board. I'm not doing it. I am grabbing this cutting board, should have had it ready, um, getting a new cutting board out and a new knife. Choo -choo. I think I had a new knife. Where'd my knife go? Maybe. Maybe I'm going for a butcher knife this time because uh, I don't see my other chopping knife. I thought it was ready for me. It must be on the other side of the kitchen somewhere. We are doing, you don't get into KJ's kitchen without boosting the nutrition. We are doing two cups, 
Now here's how you measure a cup of spinach. This one cup, okay, one nice good size handful. Two cups, got it? Two cups of spinach. You are adding this spinach into the meat once it's done. See, I think this meat's already good and brown. We are done, done, done. I don't see any raw turkey over here. I'll show it to you before I add the spinach. Chopping it, I like this puppy nice and chopped. <laughs> Super chop, work those guns. Okay, two, there was one, two cups of spinach. Do you see how much this looks like a lot? But I promise you, once you finally chop this up and you toss it in with that meat, it takes no time to quickly wilt, it looks like an herb. But what you're doing is you're adding in the green. How often are you really reaching for your eight and 10 servings of vegetables a day? Let me help you out with two servings right now. So I gotta use a butcher block, a butcher, butcher knife, cause I don't know where my chopping knife is. Oh, we have good times here in the kitchen. You do what you gotta do. Keep the fingers out of the way. Definitely feels different using a butcher knife, I tell you that. It does not feel the same. Chop, 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 chop. I'm going long and skinny one direction. I repile it and then I rotate and go long and skinny the other direction. So you get tiny little squares of spinach. Got it? Tiny little squares. For any stragglers on the side, I just pile them in again and chop those stragglers right on top of the old because it's okay to get them nice and finely chopped. Now here's some information of spinach. Similar to tomato, it becomes more nourishing for you when you cook it, especially the calcium in spinach. Tiny little squares. When you cook, and you don't need to overcook it because then you're gonna ruin the nutrients. That's why this puppy is done. I actually turn off the heat. Check out my nice little meat mixture. Gorgeous, beautiful. Turning off the heat, stirring in the spinach. Doesn't take much for this spinach to wilt up. I chopped her up. I'm just gonna toss her around. It is hot in here. There we go. So number one, this spinach is wilting already. You can see it. It's not even on the heat anymore. The heat of the meat is doing it. I've turned off the heat already. It wilts it. The longer it sits in there, the more it wilts. And how beautiful is that? Right? Looks like a little fresh herb. Does not change the flavor profile, I promise. Because spinach, whew, spinach I do think needs salt. So what I do is I take a pinch of salt right when I'm done and I just season it. Maybe that was maybe another half teaspoon, if even. Um, but just salt to taste, really. You can give this a little taste just like this to make sure you like what you're doing here. I'll give it a taste for you. Mm. Mm. Okay, guys. Number one. Whew, a little kick with that red chili pepper. You would never know that that was ground turkey and not a phenomenal sausage. Like homemade sausage because of all those fresh herbs I just put in there. No preservatives and crap. A lot of times sausage is mysterious, full of a bunch of junk. Okay, so that tastes phenomenal. It is a little on the salty side. So when you taste this before adding the squash, know that the mixture itself is on the saltier side. Maybe I could have avoided that last pinch of salt. We like salt in this house. Thank goodness we use pink Himalayan. When I get this spaghetti squash in this, it is no longer salty. That squash is going to pull the flavors out. Let's get into the squash now. You're gonna cut, if you can see this here, here's the little stem. You're gonna cut that little stem off. Boo boo. Ooh, it's a little hot. I like to use my dandy, uh, what do you say, oven mitts. Thanks, Mom. Mom knits these, they're beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pop the squash under the cutting board so you can see it a little bit. And you can see, oh, this poor puppy split open. I guess it won't be as pretty um, this round as it was when I, whoop, when I delivered it to my husband last time. It was nice and pretty. Okay, squash end off. 
Got it. Now I'm going in for the squash itself. And I'm cutting halfway down. Whew, nice and done. Oh yes, done. Whew, super toasty. See, this has been finished cooking for at least, I'd say 20 minutes. And because I didn't crack it open yet, it's piping hot, guys. So this could be done in advance. And as I said, if you're not in a hurry, it could be done in the oven. You would do it 375, cut it while it's raw, scrape out the seeds while it's raw, and have it face up in the oven. I'm just gonna go grab something to scoop. Real quick, hang tight, almost done. I said 25 minutes, but I think I talked so much. So it's 26 minutes already and we haven't dished our plate. But I'm scooping out the seeds. That's all I'm gonna do over here, real quickly, because we don't wanna eat them. I mean, I guess, I guess people eat pumpkin seeds, do it. Does anyone take spaghetti squash seeds or butternut squash seeds and put them in the oven? I mean, clearly there's not enough to really make a big batch. I wonder if they taste the same, because they're all related, pumpkins and squashes. Okay, let me use the hot mitt. Whew, coming over. If you are not familiar with spaghetti squash, Check out the spaghetti noodles. No joke, okay? You see it's even like shreddy, shreddy spaghetti. And what I'm doing now, bear with me, is I'm scraping out the squash. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Scraping it out. Scrape around all the sides. It'll fall out easily. Fall out like spaghetti. And the texture is amazing. I cannot even stress. Now you don't have to be crazy about how much you scrape because I'm actually using these squash rinds as the bowls. So when you're eating it, you can scrape out more, a little more intentionally. So, you know, we're all about speed and efficiency. Even if you are in real time cooking this for your dinner, uh, you don't have to be so precise about super scraping it out because we're still gonna be able to eat it because we are going to put it back into the beautiful bowl a little bit. That's more all about display than anything. And now we're gonna toss this. So I don't have a name for this. This isn't like, oh, this is just like an Italian dish. I call it the KJ whatever. So really, I think the best thing I could call it because we're putting it back in this rind would be stuffed squash, right? But it's still a pasta dish because it's spaghetti squash, so. Hence, no noodles and lots of spaghetti. So you saw all, all you need, you need this big pan, all that salty goodness that I just said when you eat, when you take a bite of the mixture in advance, is getting dispersed with an entire squash right now. How beautiful is that? Yeah? Is that amazing? This bad boy is now going back into the squash. Let me show you this. Here it goes, here it goes, here it goes, here it goes. Do, do, do. Beautiful. Whew. I'm just gonna show you one for the sake of time. Although when you're feeding your family, you'll go ahead and do both. And now this could be a food for two if you are two adults. Um, it could be you could disperse them into bowls and not reuse the rind. Um, and make it smaller amounts. It could be a side dish um, to a beautiful array of vegetables. I'm using feta. Um, you could up for like um, a sharp, a sharper, like a Parmesan or something. I like feta that it is boosted in protein, not as much fat. It's a hard cheese that's a little salty. So if you, this one's actually cow milk, but it does come as goat as well, which is original from Greece. The goat is normal. So this is, uh, this feta was from Aldi's and the bigger chunks, I'll go ahead and just break with my fingers. Usually I buy a cube, it's got a little lazy and bought the pre-crumbled kind. Easier for just quickly topping it on a salad. Okay, let me show you this bad boy. Get my little hot oven mix mitt here. Oh, how? Beautiful. How tasty. Let me give you a little taste test here. Get my spoon. Okay. Going in, little feta, little spinach, little sausage or fake sausage. Here we go. 
Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's the deal. The spaghetti squash itself has a sweeter profile, like a lot of squash. So you have the spiciness of the sausage seasoning. You have the sweetness of the squash, the crunch from the almonds, and a little salty finish with the feta. This is phenomenal. If you eat this and don't love it, I need you to write to me and tell me what you didn't love. So I'll be posting a link so that you can get on my email list. This will come to your inbox. It is the most amazing, delicious. And guess what, guys? Maybe because I talked too much, it was 30 minutes live, but this is a dish that will be done in 25 minutes in your home. 15 minutes to cook that squash. While you're cooking it, you brown the rest, toss it together, serve it up. That should take about maybe even 20 minutes if you're really quick at what you do. So if you are not currently on my email list, I urge you to, you will click the link. The link that will be down there will give you the last recipe I've just done. I was sick last week, guys. It was not coronavirus, thank you, Lord. But it was respiratory and it was a really came with a vengeance. Using the ancient Chinese remedy, I used it for maybe 24 hours, did a couple doses, and it was wiped out within two days. Back to normal, went running, lungs feel great no more constant uh drainage no more sinus headaches so that's the recipe that's current so you'll click the link that i'll be posting in two minutes in here that's the recipe you'll get immediately you'll get this one within 24 to 48 hours this is delicious natalie it would be great with some cherry tomatoes up in there oh it would girl my husband doesn't love them but if you and your family do put some cherry tomatoes in there i love cherry tomatoes in my pasta he also doesn't love mushrooms. I was thinking about mushrooms in this too. Again, gotta tend to my family. Add what you will, just like you do any Italian dish, you know, when it comes to pizza or pasta. Pump in the good stuff. If you love peppers, you might even chop peppers in to the onion and garlic beforehand. I feel pepper might pull some of the flavor away. Kind of, I think it's a very strong flavor. So I opted not to use peppers in mine. All right, guys, I would love to hear from you. Sign up to the email list. I'm gonna be going live right now in my KJ Fit Club group with a live home workout. If you need extra motivation, extra recipes delivered to you and challenges to get your healthy habits going, you can just go ahead and inbox me. Let me know you want an invitation into that group. All right, it is a private secret group, so you're not gonna find it otherwise. Lots of love to everyone. Have a beautiful Wellness Wednesday. Do take care of you and your family. Get a little recluse, you know? Only go out when you absolutely need to because people are spreading this virus without knowing it because it, it has some incubation time. So let's nip this in the bud. Let's not turn into um, China or Italy with how quickly this will spread. Let's be wise, people, okay? It's not only about washing your hands. Keep doing that. Don't breathe the air of anyone contaminated. That just means less contact, okay? I wish you and your family the absolute best, the healthiest rest of your week, healthiest rest of forever. Um, and we'll see you here next Wednesday. Take care. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.